In 1950, East Germany establishes a Ministry for State Security. In 1957, Erich Mielke is named Minister of State Security. Mielke heads the ministry till November 1989. As central administration for the protection of the national economy, East Germany's first secret police is established in 1949. In 1950, it is transformed into the Ministry for State Security, commonly known as Stasi. It models itself on the Soviet secret police Cheka. Stasi personnel proudly call themselves Czechists. The ministry's central headquarters occupy an entire city block in East Berlin. In the 1980s, 20,000 employees work here for the Stasi. In 1953, the Stasi suffers an unexpected shock. It is caught completely off guard by the national uprising of June 17th. Soviet troops quell the revolt by force. The Stasi is more than just the ministry in Berlin. We have also in Berlin the Ministry with Erich Milke on the spitze. 15 Bezirke, einschließlich Berlin. In Berlin, we have the ministry headed by Erich Milke. Under it are 15 districts, including Berlin, with a district administration in each, whose directors report directly to Milke. And under them are local administrative offices. In Leipzig, it's 13, each with its own specialist departments. Looking at their job descriptions, you won't find a single area of public life that didn't fall under the purview of one of these specialist departments to monitor and secure it. The local offices ensured total surveillance of the entire country. Fifteen district administrations and over 200 local offices blanket the whole country. By the 1980s, the Stasi has over 90,000 full-time personnel. It is East Germany's largest government agency. Espionage is one of the Stasi's primary tasks during the Cold War. In the Satellite Reconnaissance Center in Biesenthal, north of Berlin, Central Department 3 uses 30-foot dish antennas to intercept Western satellite signals. Radio technology is of great interest to the Secret Service. The Stasi monitors all companies involved in constructing the TV tower on Berlin's Alexander Square. After its completion, seven employees of Central Department 20 remain active in the tower. Along the West German border, the Stasi installs antennas to eavesdrop on car phones and radio communications. At the time, two-thirds of all West German phone calls are transmitted by wireless radio links. One primary link between Hanover and Munich crosses East German territory. In good weather, the Stasi could pick up calls from as far away as Frankfurt, Cologne, and Bonn. Following this fatal logic, the Stasi starts a sort of cold civil war against its own people. It develops special machines to open, copy if necessary, and reseal 90,000 letters a day sent from or to suspicious persons. In the end, the Stasi numbers 90,000 regular personnel and 180,000 IMs. The vast majority works within East German borders against their own fellow citizens. Ultimately, two of every 100 adults in East Germany work for the Stasi. Relative to population, it is the largest secret service in the history of mankind. That is why, in my opinion, comparisons to other secret services simply fall short. The Stasi always worked on three levels, as a conventional intelligence agency for one, 
but also as a secret police against its own people. And thirdly, as an autonomous investigative agency. All, of course, because party rule was to be maintained by all necessary means. Especially after the uprisings of 1953, it became obvious that the population had to be held in check politically by an especially alert organization. This investigative agency was just right for the purpose.